Hello, hello. They're getting started. I'm taking it slow this time. Why people jump on. But we're doing episode nine of If This Canvas Could Talk. So, so excited to have you guys here with us this morning. And um, no one's on yet, but I'm going to go ahead and bite. Um, don't see her yet, Miss. Hi, Mom of the Zoe. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to do another episode of If This Canvas Could Talk in just a few minutes. I'm going to invite my fellow artist, Terry Wilson, but I don't see her coming on. And, oh, there she is. Okay, I'm going to invite my friend Terry. Started as soon as she comes on. Um, welcome, everybody, that's coming to episode nine of If This Canvas Could Talk. Do we have Miss Terry? Here. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, perfect. We're okay, getting so good welcome. at this. You're getting so good at this. I'm getting better. I'm getting more relaxed. So mom, mom of the Zoe is on with us. I think that's our only listener right now, but I know there's going to be more people coming on. Pin 5K joined. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited about this one because we get to share with everybody how your pop-up shop went and we can um, share all the knowledge that you learned and everything that you found out about it. So again, I am Jeanette Bergstrom. I'm an artist and painter and joining me as always is my fellow artist, Terry Wilson Art. And this is episode nine of If This Canvas Could Talk. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to talk about pop-up shops. So yes. I'll get right into it. I've got a bunch of questions to ask you. So um, my first one is, first, Terry, how in the heck did you get involved in a pop-up shop? How did you hear about it? How did you get involved? Um, tell me the background story for that. Well, like anything, it's all in connections and just who you know and, and throughout your life, putting yourself out there and having those connections with different people because you never really know, you know, where they're going to lead. Um, I am have a friend from my previous career and she was, she bought my very first painting. Um, that I do. Yes. And so it was super exciting. And so we have our previous career connection for 20 plus years. And then she is my first collector. And her son owns a home uh, decor, a high end home decor store in the area. And so they were looking to uh, build their uh, sales and they were looking for someone to partner with them. So it was a mutual partnership in that I shared with my followers, they shared with the, their followers, we invited collectively all of our people. And I would say that it was half and half of who was at the pop up. And so it was really exciting. So I got exposed to new people and gained new followers and, and gained uh, two new collectors. And they gained um, several new customers, you know, that were shopping while they were there. So it was very uh, lucrative on both sides. Yeah, because you invited a bunch of your friends, too, to help support, right? Yeah, friends and people that, well, and of course, they are, are collectors as well, too. Yes, and then they collected more. I sold 13 paintings while I was there. Oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> so I exciting. know, I'm just blown yeah. away. I'm just so blown away. It was super, super fun. Yeah, just like with my art fair, I would recommend if anybody's doing something like this, you got to, like, beg, borrow, and steal all your friends and family to come out and support you because it makes a huge difference. But um, yes, and, and, and on that note, I will say that my biggest thing, and I brought this over from what I did before, because I was in sales for a very long time, um, is that it's all about making people feel important, because obviously they are. And so I made sure that 
I sent out personal invitations to people and let them know that this was a celebration. This is my first pop up and yeah. that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for their love and support of my business and my journey. And I wanted them to come and celebrate with me. And I really believe that that is, um, and that, and that is coming straight from my authentic heart, it, you know, and, and they did, you know, they came and they, and they were so excited because they've been a part, I've been sharing my journey on Instagram from day one. And they've seen me back with my crazy very first whatever I was making. And they've been a part of the evolution and they bought things. So to include them in that part of the journey was incredibly special for me. And I, and I hope that it was for them too. And I feel like it was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And this is your first ever anything you've done in person with your art. Yes, because everything has been online. I started at the be very beginning of COVID, so there was nobody was going anywhere or being around anyone. So it was a family reunion, a friend reunion <laughs> in a way, you know, as well as, yeah, putting my art out for the very first time, which was nerve wracking to actually be next to it and be with people and talk about it. And it was, it was different and it was, it was went be way better than I expected. Oh, awesome. And then um, you also had, I think we talked a little bit about this. You said, because you didn't have the inventory, it was a little tough to build. Like, if you have inventory and you have a bunch of paintings that you can set up at probably the two weeks, I think you said you had two weeks to get ready. Yes. Talk yeah, that's one of that. the things that, yeah, that was my one, my major, there, uh, I had a couple major learns through it, right? And that one is the big one, which is that, I did not have the inventory because they wanted me to do smaller pieces. Um, I had done a collection last year, which was a uh, six by six minis and they did very well at Christmas time. So her idea was to do that and they would fit in the store and all of that. But I also got to take some bigger pieces. I think I had a, a 36 by 36 and then I had some 24 by 24s that those sizes. So um, I had to, and then I thought I, when I agreed to it, I thought I would have longer to paint and to get everything ready. But, but because it coincided with a community Oktoberfest event that was across the street, they wanted ah. to capitalize on those people being out and about and get that foot traffic in. So she asked if I could do it sooner. I said, yes, of course. But <laughs> it was a tight timeline because you're painting everything. It's got to dry. You've got to varnish it. The varnish has to dry. You've got, I did COAs for all of them with a certificate of authenticities and and the paperwork side of it takes a while and then tony did cr uh, qr codes we had to upload them all into the uh, into the uh, website it takes a lot to get ready as you know from doing yeah. your uh, fair so yes i think in a perfect world i would in the future make sure if i don't have the inventory to at least have four weeks yeah to okay. prepare and then that leads me into the next thing because you talked about so when i did mine I just had prices that everybody had could see and they were out there, but you ended up doing QR codes. So how did that work? Did you get a lot of people asking what the prices were? No. So I actually did have a little, I, I bought those clear kind of leaning, you could put documents in them. I don't know yeah. what they're called, but, and it said yeah. on the table. And so I had my prices on that. And then the okay. QR codes were actually just for them to be able to check out. So um, remember you on yours, you, you use square to check out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and that was another big epiphany that we had from, from this. So we set up the QR codes, which if you haven't ever done them, they're actually super easy to do. Um, and that's a, that's for another uh, class, another day. <laughs> but um, Tony did, and I say they're super easy because Tony did them, but they are easy. <laughs> they are easy to do and, uh, and free to make. So they linked straight to the website. So all they had to do was just click on it, you know, or, put it in their photo and then it would bring it up on the page on the website. They added it to their cart. They could do multiple because some people bought multiple paintings and then it would, they just checked out on my website, which went through my Shopify, which then went into my quick, what, my QuickBooks. And then it was all kind of like, there was more work on the front end, but there was less work on the back end on my part to have to so put you, all of that in. So you would definitely do that again, but we, we Oh, hundred percent. But the only thing you have to think about is if you don't have Wi-Fi. 
Yes. Yeah, so that was what we ran into. Um, okay. there, they were in a concrete building kind of, if anybody's been to Costco and you know, you cannot get a signal in Costco because <laughs> of their building. And so, yeah. um, it was like that. It was like, all of a sudden our first person went to check out and it wasn't working. Uh -oh. And so we were able to get onto the, the store's Wi-Fi, and we had no issues from there. So I would say that is something that you need to check out um, and just have a backup in case, you know, because you never know. Like, I would have the square reader just in oh, case. Yeah. Or so worst easy. case scenario, yeah. you could always do PayPal and just send them a request, and they could pay you that way. Um, but, yeah, True. Internet is True. important. Yeah. yeah, that was the backup. And for those of you guys who don't know, she has a very good helper, Tony, which is her husband, which he was sweet enough to sit. And so she could talk and, um, yes. you know, hang out with people. And he um, took care of all the like checkouts. And so, yes. And my nephew, Bryce. So they were my behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah, they they took care of, they helped me set everything up. And then they, it was a two hour event, but it lasted about almost three hours. And so they stayed the whole time. They were my behind the scenes. They checked everybody out. And it really, I would suggest that if you're going to do something and you can have a partner go with you, and you said that too, having your sister yes. and your brother in love there, yeah. um, that it, 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 it allows you to do what you do best as the artist, which is the whole point of there is to connect with the people. Right. And when they have that connection with you, they're more apt to be a, uh, a collector and then a, a, a multiple collector because they're there. They have that, that relationship with you. So that was really amazing that, yeah, that actually, I actually, especially when we're first starting out and we don't know exactly what we're doing to have somebody there. Yes. To help is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. Okay. Then I wanted to know, so I did a, my fair, I did a, a giveaway print that I had people signing up for. What did you do for people's capturing emails for people other than the ones that ended up purchasing from you? What, what did you do for that? I ended up doing nothing because okay. it came, <laughs> yeah, it came down to the wire at the end. Right. And, uh -huh. um, I needed to make a decision on it. I needed to, so I needed to decide what I wanted to give away. I needed, I didn't have any prints or anything. I needed to decide, I needed to make a thing that said, Hey, I'm giving this away. Yeah. I'm super new to Canva and I don't know how to do all of that yet. And it stresses me out. And I think I already had decision overload because I had to yeah. decide how I was going to do my table. And there was a lot of decisions. Yeah. And so I finally just said, you know what, for this one, if I don't get emails, I'm going to live. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah. And I just let it go because it was, it was stealing my joy and I wanted yeah. to really just enjoy the whole process. So I did get the people who purchased, I did get their emails because they had to put it in for the receipt. Yeah. Um, but in the future I would, I would create that. Like once you create it once in Canva, then I think you're always going to have like the little flyer that you can put up that says, Hey, enter to win or, you know, however you worded yours. So um, I would yeah. probably lean off of you next time and see what you <laughs> did and then copy. Wait, did you do it? You did a QR code though. I thought, didn't you? I did, but I wasn't really over there as much like that to tell to them say what it was. It. Yeah, you yeah, know, so what it was. Okay. So, and I think that in the future for the QR code, I would put on there, I'd make the, because the QR code was really big and I'd make that smaller and then I'd put around it and make it more attractive. It was just the QR code. And yeah. I don't think, I, I thought that I would have time to tell everybody to do it. What it was. But when you're there and you're in the moment, it does not flow like that at all. It's just there's moments of chaos and you're talking to everybody <laughs> and things are happening. And you're not thinking about, oh, click on this QR code and sign up for an email. You know, like it's just, especially when they're buying, you're not like right. distracting them from buying to sign up for an email. You're like, no, just do all this. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I did learn a lot about that for sure. And then where did you get your little plastic stand-up holders that holds the paper? Well, you can get those at any office supply, but I ordered them from Amazon. Okay. So, okay. yeah, they had a bazillion different ones, but. Okay. And then since you had this kind of experience in, the, in your past with setting up, like, home parties and stuff, 
what what would you recommend so for me when i did the fair again um i i'm totally changing how i'm going to do it because i sign up for two so i go back on december 10th mm -hmm. and i'm completely changing how i set up my booth so for someone that hasn't done it before what would you recommend like what to think about when you're how to display your art like what what would you have them look at or think about I think that the biggest thing that I've learned over the years in doing different booths and things is that it, it has to be um, inviting, right? And so, and it has to be more up at eye level, like the more that they have to look down. So creating levels of, like if you have a table set up. So obviously if you're doing a booth, your art's going to be on the walls, right? That's yeah. a whole different topic, but which I have to figure out soon. So we need to talk about that. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, if it's on the table, you want to create different heights. So like if you go back and look and I can post the photo actually somewhere um, later, or if you DM me, I'll send it to you. But um, of, I created different heights of where the paintings were. So there were some lower, some were here, some were there. And so you kind of created this vignette of different heights of where your art is so that the eye, it's almost like creating a painting. You want the eye to flow oh, right through the painting. So you yeah. want the eye to flow through your table and not all just be flat sitting on the table. It's got to have interest. And when I first did the, and do a run through, like seriously, get oh, yeah. it all ready. Get yeah, it all I ready. I did one I first. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. and I took a cause... picture of it yeah. so that when I got there, I just, Bryce held the photo in front of me on the phone. Yeah. And I was like, hold this for me. And then I just started to put them where they were on. And it was a little bit different because their table was smaller than mine, but that's okay. I just scooched it all in. And I'm glad that I did the run through because I, it saved me a lot of time. I didn't yeah. have to stand there and think, oh, that doesn't look good. I did all that at home. Oh, and I fixed it. So smart. And yeah. my background things in the beginning that I used for height were very yeah. busy. And so they were distracting from my art. So oh, okay. I had to take some out and use some things that were very plain. Like I used boxes, like decorative boxes to create my height. And so I took the colored ones out and I used white. And so, and I still had a few color ones, but the white ones really gave the eye somewhere to rest because all my art is very colorful. Right. So think simple or think something that won't distract from your art. And where did you get those boxes? Well, luckily I just had those in my office from, <laughs> you know, I like to organize things. And so I just kind of pulled from there, uh -huh. but you know, Michael's would have that or, and you always want to do things that are inexpensive. So if you have things around the house, think, think there first, like, what could I use that I already have? Because it costs money to make money and we're spending money out to do these things. And then if you're not getting money back in, you're just kind of going in the hole slowly. Right. Yes, so I think we're, I'm in the hole. <laughs> yeah. in the hole. It happens in the beginning, you know, every business has that where they've got to invest in it. But yeah. if you know that booths are going to be your thing and you know right. that you really want to do it, then slowly you can invest in, in, in pieces that are always going to be what you use and it'll get easier. Right. But for this, it was my first time and I really didn't know if I was going to like it long term, like if it's something I want to do all the time. So I just tried to use what I had around the house. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me reach out. There's a couple. Lisan is here. Thanks, Lisan, for coming. JH Creative, Deborah Whelan, Whelan Art. And um, I think that's Drama Free. I, or I, I know I said that wrong. <laughs> but you anyways, do it welcome. because the the names I always get the names wrong. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. Um, okay, and then um oh I forgot the other part of the display that I didn't mention to you, but I was like, oh my god, this girl's got it. You wore the cutest black t shirt with your logo on it. Oh my god, girl, and it's sparkles. <laughs> Of course it does, because I'm all about sparkle. <laughs> that, I saw that, and I thought, oh, my God, this girl is such a professional. I've been doing it a long time. I've been yeah. doing a long time, and I am great with a theme. Like, that is my strength. If anybody needs a theme or an idea, like, reach out to me, because it's, I don't know 
why, but it's just something that I've always been really good at. So I did these, I ordered these online. I had them made with my logo and they're just an iron on transfer. And then I never like the t-shirts that they give you choice of doing. I don't, I'm, I'm a very texture girl. I need a soft t-shirt. I don't yeah. like, and I don't want it up to heat. Like, so I ordered my own t-shirts that I like. And then I ironed them on and did them. So, yeah, and they turned out really cute. And I had people there that were like, can we buy those? I want one. So, Well, there you go. You need to have little T-shirts. <laughs> oh, I guess. For your next on one. the side, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so good. So you just ordered. So you have to um, let us let let us know where you ordered those iron-on transfers. And um, the iron-on transfers came from a company called Just Jen, J-E-N, Just Jen. Just and Jen. she's the rhinestone okay. gal. And she... You can just send her whatever design you want, and she'll create it in rhinestones. I think that each transfer was um, somewhere between ten and fifteen dollars. I want to say I haven't ordered them in a while, but and that's really inexpensive for the quality. Like they, I've ordered from her before in my other job, and um, and they last. I mean, if you get them on there and you you follow the directions and you really you know, adhere them to this shirt. I've washed these suckers a million times. They, I'm, and I wash them on delicate, but I don't turn them inside out. I'm not doing anything. They stay. So it's, okay. the, it's worth it. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Cause I thought I saw that little extra and I was like, Oh my God, she's so cute with her little t-shirt. <laughs> I love that. You. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Nobody's going to advertise for us as much as right. we're going to advertise for ourselves. We have to take advantage of every opportunity that is put before us because we're our biggest cheerleader. We are. We're, we're it. And I, I we're think it. as artists, that's, I think I'm learning that in the art world, that is a very hard thing for uh, artists to do and to get comfortable with is tooting their own horn. Beep, beep. Like, yeah. You got to, you, you know, you got to get that courage. And sometimes we don't have the courage in the beginning, but yeah. that's where you fake it till you make it. You fake the courage and you do the things that you're afraid of and that make you uncomfortable. And then eventually it starts to get easier. And, yeah. and, and then you're like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. It, it feels uncomfortable at first, but I promise you it's like a muscle. It'll get yeah. easier. Well, I already feel more comfortable ready just to do my second art fair. And so that was my next thing about it is you and I both looked at going into these things as not for a monetary gain, but for the experience and yes. the knowledge, just learning and having done it and figuring out if, for me, especially if that's, if I want to go and set up booths at art fairs, if that's something I even want to do. So I, I have to do a couple different ones just to see still. Yes. Like, I don't think two is going to tell me, but, um, I and you're you going to you yours. need to do a different one as well because last time yes. we talked about you doing one that was more of a fine art fair, yeah. Um, so that that'll be a little bit different vibe than where you were at, and so you'll have to kind of compare from there, you know. Yeah. But you did the same thing. You weren't. You weren't. I mean, yes, of course, we all wanted to make sales, but we we both weren't looking at it for that. So, um, yes, I know you because. Having come from sales, I will tell you that if you go into any any opportunity with dollar signs in your eyes, uh, people can read that. People can sense it. They can feel it. They know. It's a desperation. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And the reason, one of the reasons why I left the career that I was at was because times had changed and competition had changed and and so it was getting harder and harder to get new clients or customers and to keep them and that desperation i still had quotas i still had things that i had a car that i had to maintain that was free but it wasn't because i had a quota <laughs> that i had to meet in order to have this free car right. and so that i started to feel that desperation all the time of like i have to sell something because i need it in order to do this. And yeah. I hated, hated, nice. hated that feeling. Yeah. And, and it, it just made me not want to, I never wanted to get out of bed because I just don't want to feel that way. So go into it with, that's going to come naturally if you put all of the other things in line first, which is right. I'm going for joy. Right. I'm going for joy because my God, I got to do a pop up, man. Yeah. I mean, if you would have told me two years ago, one that I would be an artist, that I would be painting, <laughs> that I would have 
the studio, I would have been like, who are you? Are you smoking crack? This is not happening. Like, seriously. So right. to have, now to have had a pop-up, how can you not have joy in that? There's right. joy in everything. So right. first that. And then second, then, you know, learning, it's a learn, everything yeah. is learning. And then it's exposure and meeting fellow artists. Like you got the oh, opportunity man. to meet fellow artists. I can't yeah. wait to do that. I haven't done that yet, but that's nice. a huge component, right? Yeah. yeah. Sales come from putting all of that first and then you relax. And then it's like, if you sell, you sell, if you don't, oh, well. Right. And I think you have to be okay with losing the investment money per se. I mean, it's not really losing because you're gaining all these other things. But if you just let go of the fact of I may not recoup my income, my, what I paid out, but I'm going to be okay with that because I'm going to gain these other things. Or gain it emails. Things. Yeah, or gain emails or gain followers. Yes. All that stuff is so valuable that you don't realize till in the long run. So Absolutely. yeah, I think the whole reason why you and I got back into art is because well, I got back into it and you started because you had to find your joy and what makes you happy and what brings lights you up during the day. If your job's not doing it, you've got to do something that you love. Yes. So I think if we go against that, then it's going to be just like another job that you don't like. So we can't, we got to stay, stay true and stay um, precious and protect that. Yes. In everything. Absolutely. So I think that's important. And then, so let's see, what else did I want to ask you? Um, so the good thing about this that I realized when you were doing your pop-up is that it's a perfect run-through for doing an open studio. Yeah. So, so I think that what you learned from that, you could now, instead of doing it through another retail store, you could do it in, because you do have a space where you can do it and have it at home and maybe do a, make it a studio tour instead of a pop-up. But it right. works the same, right? It yes, exactly absolutely. Same. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Okay. And I actually saw a gal, I wish I would have, uh, I, I saved it, but I did, not rem I, don't, I did not retain her name. I'd have to go back and look. <laughs> but she recently did a, a, a pop-up of her own out on her deck like she had this deck and she had the the means to i'm sure she's invested in those um um what is that really expensive uh, tent thing that you can put your art on those walls the pro panels pro panels she had the pro panel things and they were all set up and she hung her art on both sides and she did it all beautifully so they could walk around and she just had it at her house that's and so cool. they never even came inside. They just came into her yard. And, and so you could do it anywhere. Yeah, that kind of gives me inspiration for doing that as well. Like once I try this other type of art fair and doing a more of a fine art fair, I'll have a good sense of what I want to do with that. And then try something where I have people come over to the house and do yes. it as a studio, um, a studio tour or um, but the only way, the only, or... I, I believe that the only way that that is going to work, not just for you or me, but for, for anyone is that mm -hmm. you've got to build the relationships online through your Instagram to, and through your, through whatever avenues that you have. But I mean, we're on Instagram, right? Yeah. You've yeah. got to, you've got to really build those relationships or, and, and be vulnerable and, and let yourself be out there. You, you know, they, they are going to need to be connected to you more so than anything to want yeah. to make them want to come because they're going to yeah. want to come to your studio or to your house to see you and the art in and the art. But I think the art almost takes a back seat because they're invested in you and your journey. You know, they yes. believe you're putting out there what your art means and what it, what you, what, what it is that you're putting out into the world, right? What it, yeah. what it's what you're saying. Yeah. And if they're following you, they believe in that. So they believe in you. Yeah, and that's the goal. And and I know what we're still, I'm still building the following, you're still building the following and yes. trying to get more customers. And then we wanted to do these, um, if this canvas could talk, because we want to share our journey with other artists. Because like I said, when I met those other artists at the fair, 
our community is so giving and so willing to share with each other because we know it doesn't matter what we do. There's plenty out there and everybody has their own style, no matter if you're doing the same subject or whatever. And I just love that, that everybody wants everybody to be successful and help yes. each other. And I, yes. think, I don't, I don't know if there's other industries that do that, but I know artists are very open to sharing and helping. And yes. I think that's why I'm glad we're doing this. And it's fun to share all these new experiences that we're having. It is. And that's what I was going to say about if this canvas could talk. I mean, right now it's super tiny. We've got two oh. viewers right now and, <laughs> and there'll be more viewers that will watch it later because this time doesn't work for them. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're probably at what, 30, maybe 30, 35, 40 people after we post it later that watch it. We're mm -hmm. tiny in this, yeah. in this little, you know, area. Yeah. But I feel like what we have to say is just as important or sometimes even more important than the artists who have already made it because it's very difficult for us as artists who are up and coming to relate to people yeah. who have already made it because in our eyes, they made it and it was perfect for them and we we didn't see the journey you know I but do, yeah and i do think it's easier for people that have like ten thousand followers or more they already have their people following them so when they do launches or they do um online sales or they do like they like live art sales or things like that they already have the following so of course it's it's a lot easier to make those sales and to make that monetary where us when you don't have necessarily have all, all your followers, your customers, it's harder. So you got to keep, so we have to keep trying things. And so I think she, you're right. You're absolutely right for, for us sharing at the beginning stages is probably could be more valuable to some people because they know it's we're going important. through the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. more relatable to the masses because the masses are all trying to do what we're doing and we're showing that we're scared just like yeah. them. You know, and we're, yeah, we don't know what the heck we're doing either. Yeah. We're just, we're just throwing ourselves out there into the deep yeah. end. And like, that's how you learn how to swim sometimes. Back in the old days, they just threw you in. My mom said <laughs> they threw her in the lake and they were like, swim. And oh if you God. didn't swim, too dang bad. So we're kind of <laughs> doing that. And we're, and we're showing you like, hey, we did it. And it was actually not as bad as we thought it was going to be. It was kind of fun. And yeah. I want to do it again. And and so I hope that more people will see the value in that and join us and ask questions and have more dialogue with us and conversation yeah. as we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And we've had that too. A lot of people have um, asked us questions and it's been really helpful. So we've been having a lot of fun. For and sure. I love having you in the trenches with me. For sure. Me too. <laughs> me too. It's always nice to have somebody that you feel like you're not alone. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's scary to be alone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They're straight the numbers. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So this is a technical question for anybody out there. So I'm doing the live, right? And then I get this pop-up thing that's like a notice for a calendar event. And so uh -huh. that's what always messes me up. So like last time when I, when I got off the screen is because I'm trying to move that message out of the way so I can close out of the live. <laughs> oh, do it. oh, I see. Yeah. So your whatever's in your calendar covering. is at the same time or reminding yeah. you of what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's covering my little controls at the top where I can end the live. So we're <laughs> going to go through that same thing again this time. <laughs> well, hey, we're see, ready to we're on. learning as we go. So now at least you know. <laughs> well, now we know what it is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to maybe turn off um, notices or something when we're doing this. So it helps. Oh, good idea. Yeah. yeah. So see, Good idea. that's a perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hi to everybody that's on with us. If you guys have any questions, um, we're just excited. So last week we talked about the art fair. This week we're talking about the pop-ups. Now we won't do another one for three weeks. We're, we're having a little um, uh, switch up in the middle. But um, so we'll be back in three weeks again with a, either a guest or doing a new subject. So, and if anybody has ideas or things that they think we could talk about, email us or DM us. Well, you won't have our emails, yes. but you could DM us. DM us, yeah, for yeah. sure. Comments then, on here, like, yeah. Yeah, it would be great to hear. So, and anybody re-watching this, we would love any ideas or suggestions because, you know, we're just starting. So we're doing good. Yeah. So what, tell, tell me, what do you have coming up? 
Now that I have that behind me, first I'm going to put everything away that's still in the hallway from it that I haven't <laughs> put away yet. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to do that and get yeah. decluttered. And then I'm actually working on, I'm going to apply for a booth in okay. the Seattle Design Center that oh, will be during their sample sale. And it's a really mm -hmm. big opportunity. Uh, my my goal of it is to get in one. Uh, I have to do a booth shot, which I've never even set up a booth. So that'll be, I'm going to do that here in the next month. I'm going to paint my little tushy off for the next month. Submit. And the opportunity is that I will be exposed to a lot of home designers, yes. high-end home designers. And I want to yes. make those connections. Um, even if I don't that, sell anything, I'm there to make connections. So that's that what I have. Be, that's what I'm going. That could be so huge. Yeah, I think so. I think so, how did, too. How did you hear about that? Well, I went to an art fair uh, here. I went to their, they have two art fairs that they normally do that is the fall and the spring. Uh -huh. And I went to the, uh, I went to the spring one and I met a gal there that I loved her art. She did some wire tree art. I bought something. She emailed me. And she said, hey, I told her I was new and I loved her stuff. And we just kind of chatted. And she sent me an email and said, hey, I don't know if you know, but this is coming up. You might be interested. You might not. And so she connected me. And so then I started, I got on their, that, the Northwest Art Alliance email. And now I'm getting all their emails. I didn't even know they existed, you know. See, so another, another shout out to the a fellow artist. I'm telling yes, you. Yes, 100%. So cool. Yeah, we totally are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. so now I'm gonna try. I mean, what have I got to lose? There, right. I already tried a couple other things and I didn't get them. I did the Seattle window um, for the restored. I did not get that. It was a long okay. shot. I knew it was, but I, what have I got to lose? Right. And I didn't get the city of Auburn. But I'm gonna keep honing my art and I'm gonna keep applying and I'm gonna keep trying. It doesn't. They don't even know who I am. It's literally right. online submission. They don't even know what I look like. So. Right. The rejection is is minimal, but it's worth a shot. Right, and didn't you when you had to do that? You you had to write your art statement oh. and your bio, so you had to do that. So that was one thing yes. you could check off your list. It's already we done. All, we all have to have those whenever yes. you're submitting things. So an artist statement. And I was and putting that off bio. because yeah, who wants to do it? It's not what we do. We 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 create. We don't write. You know, like yes. I guess writing is a form of creation, but. Uh, yeah. It's not for me. No, I, I have a hard time. I'm not very good at it either. So, yeah, that's – but, again, just by putting yourself out there and being afraid but doing it, you're yeah. going to gain. You're going to learn. So, yes. and I wanted to say hi to Daniel came and wa is watching us, and I think we're doing good. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm so what are you up to? You're preparing um, for your next booth. Yeah, so um, we talked about this last week, but um, what I realized with the arts and crafts fairs that I think people are looking for a little bit lower price points than the higher end the art, I call it, the higher end art is the eye candy, um, but the lower end, so my I had prints, all the other artists there that were at the show had cards and other things. So I am working on... <gasps> You're showing up! <laughs> Little well, ornaments. Yeah, little Christmas ornaments that I'm hand painting. This one does have glitter, my friend. That's my favorite. <laughs> no, I love she was like, should I do a gold line around it? Should I add glitter? I'm like, hmm, who are you talking to? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, and here's another one. I decided I'm not going to add. I did try one of these landscape ones with the gold around it, but I didn't like it as well. So I'm only going to do the glitter on, like, the holiday ones or the... Christmas trees. Yeah. But so I know that's a little thing. My heart is still, and I talk about this every time, I want to paint big and I want to do some abstracts. And my heart is calling me to do it, but I don't know why I'm so scared to just jump in. But um, so I'm still, but I have this art fair that I got to do. So I got to make things that are, that are um, appealing to people for that too. But eventually I'm going to get back to just painting and doing some larger works and I'm excited for that, but I'm also excited. So December 10th, if you're in the Southern California, Orange County area, uh, San Clemente Valley Art Fair on December 10th. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Okay. All right, girls. So I think we're good. Um, this was awesome. Thanks for sharing everything you learned. And I love the QR codes. I'm going to use that. 
the next time at the art fair. I'm going to do a QR code for a giveaway instead of having people physically write out their emails because then yes. I can't always read them right. So yeah. I think the QR code for a giveaway is a great idea. I'm going to order some of those plastic stand things to put the QR codes in and another one for pricing. So I don't have to put little pricing stickers on everything. That's what I did yeah. at the fair and you can't even see them and they're little. So I'm not yes. going to bother with that now. Um, so I love that, those ideas. And so hopefully anybody listening and, and listening to the replay will try and do one of these things. And then you just definitely have to let us know how it went. And hopefully, we've yeah. helped. hopefully we've helped someone. Yeah. I'm hoping. Yes. I'm yes. Hoping. All right, guys. Well, now I'm going to try to get off. So I got to remove this note. <laughs> so here we go. You got to okay. Terry and bye, everybody. Okay, Have bye, because I'm probably going to end up leaving. Okay, okay bye. see you Thanks. soon. Thanks for watching, and see you in three weeks. And uh, for episode 10, we'll be in three weeks. Okay, see? It did it. I had to go <laughs> off because I had to get rid of the note. <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. Bye.